I fixed the logo. This is Creating Electronic Music with Chuck. Last time I talked about the now keyword and how Chuck lets you control time within your project. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about loops. So far, when we've been writing our programs in Chuck, the order in which these programs ran was very predictable. They ran from top to bottom. The first line ran, followed by the second, followed by the third, and so on until the program ran out of lines. The order in which a computer program runs its lines is called the flow of control, and by default it runs from top to bottom. Sometimes, however, that might not be what you want. There are keywords in most programming languages that let you alter the flow of control to make your program smarter or more powerful. For example, what if you wanted a particular set of commands to execute more than once? You could copy and paste your code numerous times until you got the de desired result, but that would be hard to read, and more importantly, it would be hard to change. For this purpose, programming languages have what we call loops. A loop executes a series of commands multiple times. This allows a programmer to do a similar thing many times in a row with a very small amount of code. Let's see how it works. In Chuck, there are two kinds of loops, the while loop and the for loop. Experienced programmers will be familiar with both of these, but stick around, team. There are a couple of interesting wrinkles in here in Chuck land that you'll want to consider. Let's start with while loops. A while loop will execute over and over while some condition continues to be true. Let's start with a variable. I'll call it counter, and I'll give it an initial value of 1. Now we'll make a while loop. We type the keyword while, and in parentheses, we write the condition that needs to be true for the loop to repeat. Let's say we want this to keep repeating until our counter gets the 10. Let's make it wait half a second between each loop, and let's also display the current counter value to the console. We make the counter go up by 1 by chucking itself plus 1 back into itself. So we see that it counted up to 10 and then stopped. Now usually in computer programming, we want to be very careful not to create what's called an infinite loop. You want to make sure that the loop will eventually fail to meet the condition that keeps it running. The exception to that rule is any case where you know that somebody is going to manually turn the program off. Games are one example. Another example is a piece of music that you want to keep playing indefinitely. To make an infinite loop, you can just put the keyword true in the parentheses and it will keep going forever. We can make a fun video gamey celebration sound by changing the value of a sine wave three times in an infinite loop. When we're tired of it, we can just stop the program. This doesn't sound like much because the sound isn't interesting, but once you learn some stuff in upcoming lessons, you're going to be using infinite loops a lot. The other kind of loop you can use is called a for loop. Remember when we used a counter variable in the first while loop and then incremented it so that it would eventually end? Well, that's such, such a common pattern that there's a way to do all of that in one line. First, you state the initial value for your counter variable and chuck it to an int. i is a very common name for this counter. Use it wherever possible because you'll get used to reading it. Put in a semicolon. Next, write the condition just like you would in the while loop. Another semicolon. Then put i++. i++ is another way of writing chuck this variable plus one back into itself. There's also an i minus minus that we'll see in a minute. For now, let's just log i to our console and wait a bit between each iteration. So the most common way to use a for loop is that you know how many iterations you want and you just specify them in this way. But in Chuck, because you're passing numbers around that mean things musically, you can actually use the initial value and the end value to represent a value that you want to change over time, like so. In this lesson, we described how loops work in Chuck. Thanks for watching. Next time, we're going to talk about arrays and a special function that lets you convert MIDI notes into frequencies.